What's up everybody? It's your girl Megan, show fitness instructor, and today I'm going to go over section one of the NASM textbook, what you don't need to read, what you need to know in order to pass the NASM CPT. Now for those of you that are tuning in for your first time, I am our in-person instructor here in La Jolla, California, as well as our online instructor for a past NASM or any other CPT course. Thanks to the help of our study guide and weekly Zoom calls, we've been able to help over 3,100 people pass this thing and we can help you too. Now, if you guys have heard already, about 90% of textbook trainers quit training within their first year, whereas those who get certified through an internship are more likely to have a sustainable career. Now, we realize here at Show Up Fitness that you may not be able to get your money back for the CPT that you're already doing, or the gym that you're trying to get hired at only accepts specific CPTs, which is why we offer these resources to help you guys pass this thing. But more importantly, we're here for you guys so you learn everything that needs to take to make this a long lasting and successful career, which is why we have a money back guarantee for a two month SUF CPT, where if you feel like you didn't learn more in our course than you did reading through a textbook, you'll get your money back. So really, there's no excuse for you guys not to show up. But you guys here are trying to pass an out of CPT, so let's get to it. Section one. Section one is gonna be professional development and responsibility. Uh, the first chapter is gonna be the modern state of health and fitness. So this is just a basic stuff, not really anything that you need to look over here. Not gonna see that much stuff. You may see stuff in chapters that get also talked about in other chapters. So if it's already repeated, there's really no need in reading it twice here. So obesity, just knowing basic BMI. So here, page 10, the table, healthy, uh, overweight, and obese ranges. So healthy being that 18.5 to 24.9, overweight to 25 to 29.9, and obese 30 plus. Obviously they have other ones. Those are the key ones that you need to note there. Um, then you have page 12, just the type of pressure. So you have hypertension being high blood pressure, which is that 140 over 90, and realizing the difference between the numbers. So the top number being systolic, versus the Bob number being diastolic. Remembering that the top number systolic is gonna be the pressure that's exerted on your arteries walls while your heart is beating or contracting versus diastolic pressure is gonna be the pressure that's exerted on your arteries walls in between um, heartbeats or while your heart is resting. So that's a key note there. Uh, nothing there for the next pages. Diabetes, 14. Just know the basic difference between type one and type two diabetes. So type one is gonna be childhood onset through genetics. Uh, your body just does not produce the insulin versus type two is usually gonna occur later in life. It's insulin resistant. So your body's producing that insulin. It's just not accepting it. So that's good there. Uh, nothing there. Keep on going. Yada, yada. So you will see something on page 21 about NASM code of conduct. These are just basic rules, which most people will understand, but if you want to glimpse it, you can. Uh, the biggest thing that maybe you might see is 6A. You become aware of any changes in the client's health status or medication. So just basic things that you need to know of, like you're going to refer them out to a medical practitioner, a registered dietitian. You're never gonna give them a meal plan or prescribe them any supplements or specific medications. Just kind of common sense stuff. Just give it a quick glimpse. Otherwise, keep moving. Um, same thing with the code of conduct and all that stuff. Uh, number six on page 22, just know that you have to have tax and financial records for at least four years or more there. And that's done for chapter one. So then move on to chapter two. It's gonna be about personal training profession. Um, yeah, keep going there. Keep going, keep going. So resume, you might get a question on that. Honestly, if you've ever done a resume, you'll be good. If you haven't done one in a couple years or you've forgotten something, you can maybe skim it, but would not be worried. Um, Going there, there, yep. Keep on going, keep on going. Nothing more. Let's see, this marketing, nope, that's for something else. So SWOT analysis on page 49, you might see something in reference to that. Just know what it is. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. I actually do have a video on that already, so go ahead and check that out if you wanna watch that so you do not have to read the book. See, here we go, uh, four P's of marketing. So just the types of marketing, you have product, price, promotion, and place. 
Uh, you'll have it on page 50 and 51, just knowing the difference between those. Usually when you're looking at that, now I'm just gonna like promotion. So you're going to open a new gym so you can hand out flyers, or maybe do a blog, something like that. Just something to promote your service. Uh, just know the differences between those and you should be good. Um, page 53, it's gonna be that you need 1.9 CEUs, roughly about 19 hours in order to like recertify its continued education. And then you need 0.1 um, from your CPR AED certification to accumulate up to two points total in order to certify every two years. Uh, so you might see that question on there and that's it and done. All right, so we are done with section one, chapter one and two. That was a total of 50, let's see, how many pages was that? 56 pages. So save yourself the time from reading the entire textbook, get our guide, get our Zoom calls, get all the resources we have so you can pass this thing as fast as possible. Like I mentioned before, we've helped people pass under 30 days. We've helped people pass in less than two weeks, even as little as three days. So if you wanna pass this thing as fast as possible, make sure to comment below or message me through my Instagram at activeact7ve or at show up fitness and show up fitness internship. You can also message me at my email at megan at showupfitness.com just to make sure that you guys have all the resources that you need in order to pass this thing. And of course, always make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the other new and upcoming videos that I have in order to pass this thing. But like I mentioned earlier, of course, more importantly, we're here for you guys to help make this a long lasting and successful career for SUF CPT. So if you're interested in that as well, go ahead and reach out to me, like I said before, at those handles, comment below. We do have our in-person internships here in La Jolla, California. We also have West Hollywood, Santa Monica. If you can't come in person, don't worry, we are online. So we can reach you wherever you're at, anywhere in the world, so you don't have to leave the comfort of your own house. And of course, we do have weekend seminars occurring every month or so, so you can still gain that in-person experience if you cannot commit to the two-month in-person internship. So if you guys are interested in joining the SUF CPT, make sure to message me. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And of course, all you guys gotta do is show up. It's Girl Megan, out of here.